Over the last couple of days, I've read a couple of quotes that have really stuck with me. I think I might have been going out of my way to search for them, because there's a couple of things in my life that I think I really need to learn, and it's all to do with anger and self-control. Anyway, here's the first quote. Nothing gives one person so much advantage over another as to remain always cool and unruffled under all circumstances. That's a quote by Thomas Jefferson, inventor, statesman, diplomat, former president, and founding father of the United States. He had lots of good things to say, Thomas Jefferson, despite him being a slave owner, but that's probably a topic for another video. Slavery was quite common back then, so it's hard to know how any of us would react to it. I mean, if I was put in a situation, if I was born into a world, that condone slavery, would I really be the one who stands up and fights against it? Mm, I don't know, maybe. But most people would be against you, and it would be a very hard fight to win. Anyway, back to the quote. The point of the quote is that you've got to remain cool, and doing the opposite is not a very effective way to deal with other people. I mean, what is the opposite? Getting angry, right? And getting angry has a whole host of negative effects, not just on you, but also on the people that you're targeting. So what are the effects of anger on yourself? Well, as I found out, uh, being constantly angry doesn't have any positive effects. You end up in a state of constant irritation, with even minor things just aggravating you. It becomes hard to focus on the work project or the school assignment, and it makes other people around you just not want to be with you. As I found out, you end up with feelings of guilt and remorse and shame, especially if you've acted in a way that you later regret. Studies have shown that anger can also negatively affect your physical and mental well-being. Things like high blood pressure, depression, and cardiovascular issues. But the biggest problem with anger is how it affects others. I mean, you can make people feel upset, or intimidated, or even afraid. I mean, is that what we want in life? To make other people feel afraid? I mean, some dictators might like that, but certainly I don't want that. And I don't think you want that either. I mean, when I get angry and yell at my children and they cower in fear, is that really what I wanted? No, not at all. Anger, yelling, and violence sets an unhealthy precedent. Healthy relationships should be based on love and kindness, not anger and fear. The only benefit of anger, at least that I can surmise, is that you can maybe temporarily make somebody do something against their will. For example, if I'm walking down the street and somebody tries to steal my wallet, then yeah, sure, getting angry at them and yelling at them might be an effective strategy. It might lead to them just submitting or running away. But in the home environment, getting angry at your partner or children, yeah, it might have a temporary result. They might do what you want them to do temporarily, but in the end, they'll end up resenting you. Anyway, Thomas Jefferson was right on the money. If you want people to respect you, you've got to keep it cool. The next quote is from Dale Carnegie's book, How to Make Friends and Influence People. See the link in the description below. The book's quite old. It's from the 1930s, I believe, but it's still valid today. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. This quote is not Dale Carnegie's. He got it from an older source, I believe, but included it in his book. It's similar to the previous quote I mentioned from Thomas Jefferson, but it essentially says that if you force somebody to believe something or to change their opinion, well, you haven't really changed their opinion. You're just forcing them to do so. Dictators or bosses who coerce their workers to behave a certain way, yeah, they'll probably get their results, but it's not because of respect, but fear. In his book, Carnegie basically said that trying to win an argument is essentially a fool's errand. Even if you completely dismantle somebody's argument with objective facts and all your superior knowledge, you'll be no closer to changing that person's opinion. They might submit to you under the verbal assault that you've just given them, but in the end, they're not going to be convinced. Well, not deep down, anyway. Carnegie said that if you begin on polarizing ground, you're not going to get anywhere. People who are against you are going to stay against you, even if they say otherwise. Carnegie said that you have to begin on common ground, something that you both agree on, and then you can slowly work your way up to the more difficult topics. You need to be friendly, you need to not criticize the person, you need to make them feel important, but most importantly, you need the person to believe that your conclusions are their conclusions. Telling a person they're wrong has a guaranteed result, that it's going to turn off and ignore everything you have to say. Anyway, that's my little video on the two things that I've really got to learn in my life. One, I gotta stop being angry all the time. Being angry doesn't achieve the results that you want. It only makes people resentful. 
And the second thing that I need to learn is that you can't really win an argument. Winning an argument is essentially forcing somebody's opinion, and that's just not sustainable. Carnegie wrote, The only way to win an argument is to avoid it. And I think that's good advice. I'm sure it's cliché, but you've got to make love, not war. You've got to be nice to people, not angry all the time. Being angry just builds resentment, and it certainly doesn't help your relationships. Look, I've tried being angry, and it simply doesn't work. It's just a temporary solution, and it's a very bad solution at that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Talk to you next time.